NBC 15 News at 11 starts now. Now at 11, will the so-called Slender Man stabbing suspects stand trial as adults? That's what a judge will decide today. Plus, a special donation program is helping area men form a bond that also helps our local community. And at this moment, our Badgers are in Chicago for the start of their very first game in the Big Ten conference tournament. Hello and good morning everyone and go Badgers. I'm Christine Belport. Ashley is on assignment. Well, it certainly is a beautiful day and it is going to be the warmest of the year. Brian Dukes tells us if it's going to last through the whole weekend, especially Brian for Sunday's St. Patrick's Day parade in downtown Madison at 1:30. It looks like the weekend will feature uh, very nice temperatures, not quite as warm as today, but there's really going to be nothing to complain about. Right now we're seeing a good amount of sunshine across the area. There has been some cloud cover, but not to worry. There will be a good amount of sunshine as we head through the afternoon hours. Right now up to 50 degrees in Madison. One of the cooler spots actually, it's already 54 in Lone Rock and Baraboo and 56 in La Crosse. Winds continue to be out of the south and southwest, also bringing in that warmer air. And when all is said and done, we are expecting our first 60s of of the year and also our warmest day of the year. By 4 o'clock, we should be right around 62 degrees with a mix of sun and clouds. And by 6 o'clock, still hanging on into the lower 60s. We'll talk more about the spectacular forecast for the weekend and also when we do have some cooler air to move back into the region. All that coming up in a few minutes. Christine? Thanks, Brian. Making news right now, our Badgers are beginning their quest in the Big Ten Conference Tournament. The game started at 11, just about a minute ago, in Chicago. So, if they win, they will play the winner of the Purdue and Penn State game. If the Badgers are going to make a run in the tournament, though, the bench is going to have to contribute more. Senior Duye Dukin hit a couple of shots in the regular season finale and has been spending a lot of extra time in practice trying to regain his touch and, more importantly, his confidence. At this point, I think most of it's mental. Uh, I'll be honest, just because, you know, at this point, you've been practicing so much. You know what your shot's going to look like. It's not going to change much. So I think once you can get the mental aspect, just realizing that you shouldn't second guess yourself, don't think about it, and just shoot the ball, that's kind of when it comes back. You can watch the game on ESPN. Governor Walker will be making stops in New Hampshire this weekend. The half dozen stops planned include a state Republican Party event tomorrow. The governor will also be meeting with several Republican leaders in that state. Next week, he heads to South Carolina for two days. Well, a sad update today on a story we brought you earlier this week. The Green Bay man whose disappearance led to a silver alert has been found dead. Police say a person found Philip Jean Quartz's vehicle on their property yesterday. Jean Quart was not in the car, but his dog was. Authorities looked for Jean Quart and found his body in some nearby woods. Investigators have not determined how he died, but they say there is no indication of foul play. Authorities say he suffered from dementia. Happening today, a judge is expected to rule on whether two girls accused of stabbing a classmate to please the fictional character Slenderman should proceed in adult court. Now, attorneys for the 12 and 13 year olds say the defendants do not belong in adult court and that charges of attempted first degree intentional homicide should be dismissed. The girls are accused of stabbing their classmate 19 times in a park last May. She survived. If the girl's case lands in juvenile court and if they are convicted, they could be sent to a secure facility until they turn 25 years old. A new Glarus man has been arrested for reportedly getting high off a can meant to be used for dusting electronics. Police say they found 33-year-old Scott Solberg passed out in his car yesterday afternoon at the intersection of Commerce and Plaza Drives. Car was running and in drive, but Solberg had a foot on the brake. Well, that's helpful. That's Solberg's fifth OWI. Making news around the nation, police in Ferguson, Missouri, continue their search for a gunman who shot two police officers in a protest early Thursday morning. Now the president has weighed in on that violence. NBC's Chris Pallone is in Ferguson with the very latest. While there were some tense moments between protesters and police, Thursday night's demonstration ended without violence. But police and protesters in Ferguson remain on edge after someone shot two officers during the previous night's protest. <laughs> Witnesses say the shots came from about 100 yards away. One officer shot in the face, the other in the shoulder. Both are back with their families after being treated. 
It's an ugly reminder of what can happen. You know, uh, there are people out here that want to hurt the police. Now investigators are trying to figure out who. There are no suspects and no one has been arrested. People leading the charge for change in Ferguson say they're still undeterred. The end game is to uh, continue, continue to fight until we, we have a system that is going to be uh, equal to everyone. The president condemned the violence in an appearance on Jimmy Kimmel Live. You know, I think that what had been happening in Ferguson uh, was oppressive and objectionable and was worthy of protest. But there was no excuse for criminal acts. The latest round of protests comes after the city's police chief announced his resignation following a scathing Department of Justice investigation into the police department. Also Thursday, people in Ferguson held a prayer vigil asking for healing for the injured officers and for their city. And that was Chris Pallone reporting. Well, this morning, we learned 169 Harley-Davidson employees will be laid off at the plant in Missouri. The Milwaukee-based motorcycle manufacturer says the layoffs are effective May the 11th at the Kansas City plant. That's where Dyna, Street, and V-Rod motorcycles are manufactured. The company said the layoffs reflect production needs. Now, the company says no layoffs are planned for its Wisconsin plants or its operation in York, Pennsylvania. Another American health care worker infected with Ebola is back on U.S. soil. The worker was admitted to the National Institutes of Health. This is in Bethesda, Maryland, just this morning. Doctors are not releasing any information about that patient, except the person had been volunteering at an Ebola treatment center in Sierra Leone. American nurse Nina Pham was treated at the NIH after she became infected while caring for a patient in Dallas, Texas. She has since recovered. It is finally Friday, and today, you know, many friends are watching the Badgers right now, or they're just enjoying some time outdoors. But one group of men right here in Madison, they spend their Fridays doing something a little different. NBC 15's Kate Pabish explains. Believe it or not, they sit around with needles in their arms, donating platelets. Now, platelets are the part of the blood that makes it clot in high demand by cancer patients going through treatment. I caught up with them for one of their hangouts, and they say donating platelets runs in their veins. Yeah, here you go again. If you're thinking about venturing to the West Side Red Cross on a Friday. Well, now it's uh, kind of like the uh, blood, a uh, platelet donors coalition. Plan on making some new friends. In fact, we kind of control everything that goes on here on Friday mornings. That's what drew me in. 15 years ago, Bob, Carl, and Daniel wound up in the seats next to each other. All righty. Hey, Bob, how you doing? And the three amigos were formed. Every two weeks or so, yeah. A friendship contained entirely inside these walls. We laugh, we joke. Mary brings a cake in for the birthdays. There we go. Growing the group. They're practically like family. With yeah. each new donor. Give a couple squeezes though while I'm getting my clothes on. They all have their own reasons. Uh, my first wife had uh, uh, cancer. She died of cancer. And uh, I think that's when I first heard about uh, platelets. I don't tell too many people anyway. Disguising selflessness <laughs> as selfishness. We only come for the bread. Panora brings bread on a Friday morning. Maybe someday I'll need it, you know, and I hope somebody's there to give. So for two hours. Getting stuck with needles by beautiful women. Every other Friday. I think what happens is they have a meeting in the back and they, whoever gets a short straw gets me. You'll find these men nearing the 100 gallon platelet donor club. All right, give you a worther. But consider yourself warned. Well, if we're, you're on the operating table and you don't have platelets, you bleed to death. It's that simple. Don't ask them how many lives they've saved. I have no idea. And, uh, I don't look at it that way either. Too modest. Never even thought about that. To give themselves credit. Never thought about it, yeah. Seeing the process only as a good time with friends. <laughs> you get drinks, you get uh, candy or whatever you want. Uh, Nice warm blanket, you know, movie, what more could you ask? Maybe the best example of how sometimes how you, doing? you gain the most while giving. All right, let's do that. In Madison, Kate Pavish, NBC 15 News.